evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? I want to thank you all for coming and being here with us tonight. Uh, welcome to our first Holy Week service. Uh, we have some blessings and things in store for you tonight, and I, I just want to uh, talk about that for a little bit. Uh, before we get into that, I wanted to mention a couple of quick things. Uh, and the first of those things was we had a tremendous turnout yesterday at our Easter egg extravaganza. Um, I think we were, we were anticipating and prayerful and hopeful for a, for a lot of children. Uh, but there was somewhere between 150 and 200 people here yesterday. Uh, it really blew us out of the water how, how many people were here. And we had a great time. I wanted to take a moment to just say thank you to the youth ministers, uh, to the children's ministers, and all their volunteers for all the work from the yard sale and the children's event yesterday because they have had a full-fledged workload the last three or four days. But I thank you all for being here again. I'm Tyler. I'm the pastor and uh, not preaching tonight. It's casual Monday for me. I've been moving furniture and uh, whatever else I told to do, getting ready for Easter. But we are so grateful that you're here with us today. And we have some very special guests for you. Uh, Gerald Hendon is going to be leading our message tonight. And uh, many of you have had the privilege of meeting him. And he is the uh, owner of Palmerdale and Carson Road Jumpstart Academy and has been doing so much uh, to help connect those kids to our church and uh, just creating. Uh, it's just so great to go up the hill and see life again. And uh, Gerald has uh, become not just a partner with us, but uh, for, for many of us, including myself, he's become my friend. And I'm very thankful that he's here to share with us tonight. And also here with us tonight, and I'm going to try to get all their accolades right. It may be hard. There's a lot. But Deborah Keener and her husband, Ben, and her daughter, Jessica Beeson, they are all here with us tonight. Uh, Deborah owns the Neely Art Center in Aniana. Uh, they do music lessons of almost anything you can imagine. My own daughter has been attending there, I guess, for three years. About three years, Ava has been taking piano. Uh, Jessica has, has been her piano teacher for about a year, and, and uh, we've been very blessed uh, to go there. And if you have any musical desire uh, to learn, it doesn't matter what age you are, if you know any children that are interested, I would highly recommend the Neely Art Center. They, they do a fantastic job. And I wanted to mention that. And Deborah also serves over, you, you serve over the traditional service at Lester Memorial, United Methodist Church, and she is the contemporary worship leader at Mountain Point. So I think I'm getting all of it right. That makes me feel, makes me feel really good. Did you uh, get my bio sheet there at the name of Tyler? That's how you got it right. I, you're welcome. Yeah, no, I, I think I just knew your bio. I've, I've, wrote, I've written a few checks to the Neely, and they've all come out for the better. I promise you. Uh, um, it is it's so magical watching your child learn something like the piano, and she has done a great job. So I wanted to highly recommend this trio up here to you and, and all the things they're involved in. So in just a second, and wait till I get back there, Alan, but in just a second, we're going to play a video, and after that video, they're going to open us up in worship, and I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. In a coming day, fear will die. Pain will die. Loneliness will die. Despair will die. In a coming day, sadness will die. Sickness will die. Disability, deformity, darkness, anxiety will die. War will die. Hatred will die. coming day, death will die, and we all will live again because of him. y'all want to say anything and <laughs> so we were all just like at a loss for words but um, I guess the one thing that I wanted to say is that we're not really here to play and sing for y'all we're here to worship with y'all so um, you know we all have busy lives and 
just a lot going on, I know, with everybody. So just take the next, we got like three songs that we're going to be singing and playing, and just take a few minutes to really, you know, I woke up this morning wondering what Jesus was doing on Monday of the week before. You know, we celebrated Palm Sunday yesterday, and all the kids were waving the palm branches, and, you know, I just wonder what was on his mind on Monday. And um, so just, you know, let your thoughts go to him and um, just take a few minutes to just worship with us.
thank you so very much. Thank you um, to this, uh, uh, this, 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 these artists. Man, thank you so very much. What a great song. Uh, great, great meaning. Uh, you, when you said, um, <coughs> yeah, it kind of took me uh, uh, way back and kind of almost made me lose my train of thought there when you said, close your eyes <laughs> and think about that, yeah, that we, we didn't deserve it. What God, what Christ did for us, because you know whatever we the little stuff I do do right, it still doesn't matter to what He has done for for us. And man, I am so excited about it. I'm excited um, to be here. Uh, thank God for um, this great opportunity that we have. Thank God for um, uh, your pastor. Um, oftentimes, people take on the characteristics of their of their pastor or or the church. And there's a story about an old, old preacher that um, uh, went to uh, do a revival for another preacher in another town. And uh, when, the, when he got there, the preacher picked him up from church, uh, from the airport, rather. When he picked him up from the airport, he noticed that the preacher didn't have any teeth. And he didn't think much about it. He just kind of went on and went to the hotel room. And, and when he went to the hotel room, they, they invited him to for breakfast the next morning. The preacher came and got him from, from the hotel for breakfast, and, and um, he went to uh, down the road and the, in the back alleys and got to the preacher house, and when he got there, the dog came out and, and greeted the preacher and all that, and, and, and he looked at the dog, and the dog didn't have any teeth. <laughs> and he kept going, and every night didn't pay no mind to the dog, and went on in the house, and the house was just smelling good with blueberry muffins and, and, and all kinds of, you know, of bacon and sausages and omelets. I mean, she had done it all. The wife had just done a wonderful job uh, on, on breakfast, and they got ready to sit down uh, to eat breakfast, and he noticed the wife didn't have any teeth. <laughs> and he went on and said, man, what's going on right here? And he went on back to the hotel room. Next night he came and, and got up for a revival, and, and, and the choir sang, and, and they were singing so well and so good. And, and, and man, he, he got up and couldn't, couldn't help himself. And he got up and to applaud the choir and looked at the choir, and everybody in the choir didn't have any teeth. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, wow, where, where am I? And he started preaching and, and started noticing the people were shouting and saying amen and noticed that, that he was the only somebody in the house that had teeth. <laughs> <laughs> they took on the characteristics of their of their pastor in that church. Everybody was 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 on one accord. Nobody had any any teeth. But thank God I met Palmerdale United Methodist Church. <laughs> Where everybody looked like they got their teeth. <laughs> And they certainly take on the characteristic of the church and the pastor uh, that's so loving and kind and gracious. And, and for that, I am, I, I, I am thankful. Mark chapter um, 11. Let's, let's pray first. We, God, we thank you for these moments that we have to worship you in spirit and in truth. Speak to us, speak through us, O oh God. Give us insight and understanding of your word that we may grow thereby. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Mark chapter uh, 11. Mark chapter 11, and, uh, verses 12 and through 14. And um, the, text, the text reads somewhat like this. Now, that, now the, the next day when, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves he went to to see if perhaps he would find something on it and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs in response jesus said to it let let no one eat fruit from you ever again and his disciples heard it i, I want to talk about the danger of false advertisement the danger of false false advertisement. Jesus is, is now coming coming off of a glorious moment here, coming 
coming out of Jerusalem and 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 uh, on the Sunday when they laid the palm leaves down and and they you know I'm, I'm imagining laid the coats down and showed them great kind of honor and hosanna to the highest and and he rode and triumphantly all in into Jerusalem and they were shouting and praising that man it must have been a great day must have been a great opportunity just just one of the hot I, I imagine moments in his life to come and ride in, into Jerusalem on a, on a coat that never, ever been ridden before. And they, Hosanna, and Hosanna, and Hosanna to the highest. And wow, it was a, just a great, a wonderful day. And, 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 and the Bible says that all that day was just a celebratory day. And then on, on the next day. Uh, that evening, brother, that evening when he left Jerusalem, went to Bethany, and, and some theologians assume that, that he, he stayed at Lazarus and, and Mary Martha, them house in Bethany, but wherever he was, he left Jerusalem, left the city, went out to Bethany, spent the night, and came back, came back toward, into the city of Jerusalem, and, and here's where you find our, our text, that's, 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 this is a Monday, it was a Monday. He comes back into Jerusalem on a Monday, and on his way back, the Bible says humanity and Jesus stood up. He got hungry. That's 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 good news. That's good news for you and I, because it shows that not only was he divine, but a human as well. He 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 had the experiences that you and I have. We get hungry. Oh yeah, we get hungry, get hungry. I don't know. I, 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 before I came, I was I was real hungry, <laughs> and I, I had to stop at the Jacks to get me something to eat because I I was hungry. And 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 usually I don't really eat before I preach, but 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 this time I had to because I was I was hungry. <laughs> and, and and he got there there, and, and 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 he was hungry. The Bible says, and he saw in a distance uh, a fig tree that had leaves on it. And in his mind, he felt as if, man, I'm hungry. I see in the distance some nourishment. I see in the distance some food that I can eat so my stomach can't stop, can't stop growling like it was growling. Man, I'm, I'm on my way to some get something to eat. Can you imagine? Can you imagine driving all day long? And, and, and here it is, you get hungry. Have you ever had your stomach start to twist in knots because you were hungry? <laughs> start, your stomach started talking to you because you're hungry? I, I, I can imagine Jesus felt the same way because he says he was, he was hungry. And, and, and he saw the fig tree. And can you imagine you on this road all this time? And, and, and in the distance, you, you see a sign that, that looks like a red lobster sign. <laughs> And woo, and you get excited. <laughs> Can you imagine the excitement that he was feeling? Can you imagine? He says, "Man, I'm hungry, and I see a fig tree, and 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 I'm about to get something to eat, get some nourishment, get a little food, some of my belly before I go into Jerusalem." And and man, he kept walking, and when he got there, the Bible says he found nothing. Wow, wow, and he. Found nothing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you see yourself on that on that road, traveling, stomach growling, talking to you, hungry, and and you 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 see what you thought was red lobster, uh, a sign, and, and it was it is. You come back, it's it's a, a lumber yard sign. <laughs> Whoa, how disappointing it would be. He, he got out here, and he got a little disappointed here. And, 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 and when he got the support, it, he, he cursed the tree. And, and, and I, I said, wow. I said, Jesus, wait a minute. You, you cursed the tree. I, and I, I looked at the text. I said, Jesus, did I not read? It said that, that, that it was not in season yet. I said, why, Jesus, are you going to curse the tree? When it's not in season yet, he said, "Gerald, listen, I, I, I want I want you to know, I I I, I cursed the tree 
because the tree should have had some figs. I said, hold up, Jesus, wait a minute. I said, but, but, but the Bible says it, 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 it was not in season yet yet. He says, well, let, let me tell you about the fig tree. He says, he says, the fig tree, before leaves appear on the fig tree, figs appear. He says, what the leaves does, when you see a fig tree that has leaves on it, that's a sign saying that the fig tree has figs on it. He says, I saw the fig tree from a distance. It had leaves on it. The leaves had a sign saying, here I am with figs on it. He says, when I got here, I discovered that the fig tree had a, uh, a false advertisement. That the fig tree says it had figs on it, but it didn't. It only had leaves on it. I, 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 I stand to say, I stand to say, I stand to say that, that, that even though it, it, it is it's a symbolic representation of us, that even though things are not in our season, God can still bless us even when it's not our season. Woo. Have you have you ever have you ever have you ever have you ever, have you ever, have you ever found yourself in a place where you thought you wouldn't get up? Have you ever found your place in a place where you thought you couldn't make it? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, things start to change for you. You thought it wasn't your season, but Christ knows how to turn a non season into a fruitful season. He says, Jarrah, it had leaves on it. It should have been in its season. He said, oh, no. I said, wow, God. I said, he says, what, 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 what else? Why else did you do it? He says, listen here, uh, Jerry. It, it should have had, it should have had some leaves on it. It, it, it should have had some fruit on it because it, it displayed, it displayed that uh, the, the possibility of having figs, even though the figs weren't right, it, they, they still should have had some fruit on it. I said, wow. He said, listen, listen, Gerald. Let, let me tell you what 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 this what this really means. The, the, the fig tree really is a representation of mankind. He says, listen, he says, he says cause, cause I said, he said, listen, the, the fig tree uh, 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 symbolizes the fact that, that, that there are still people who walk around every day with false advertisements. There are some Christians or some folk who call themselves Christians and walk around false advertisements. He said, Gerald, he said, listen here, there, there are some people who, who wear shirts with my name on it. There are folk who drive around in cars with my name on it. But, 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 but when you go up to them, my name ain't nowhere around them. They have a false advertisement. He said, no, no, no. He said, there, there are some churches. And it seems like we got churches on every corner. Uh, sometimes you have five or six churches on one street. And he says here, if but they, they, they have the name on the building for their false advertisements. He says, why? He says, because when you go inside them, uh, it, 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 it represents the name on it, represents a place of love. But when you go inside, ain't nothing but you know what. <laughs> he said, let's see, they're supposed to be a church that, that's a giving church. A loving church, a community uh, minor church, but that's a church that's selfish, a church that's all about themselves. They they there with false advertisement. He says, listen here. He said, that's why I had to curse them. I, I had to curse them because they, they profess it to be one thing and and, and, and they, they act like there's something else. We we're talking to a guy when I was in I was in college. And Alabama a and I guess I had to call that name in there. <laughs> college. And I, and, and I was talking to a guy in college, and I, I went there, a, a preacher, and I was sharing the word with him and the Bible with him. And I, was, I, was, I was sharing. I was, man, I said, I said, man, listen, let me ask you a question. He said, he said what's that, preacher? I said, I said why, why won't you become saved? He said, well, uh, uh, preacher, uh, uh, I, I, won't become, I won't be saved because... I've seen so many other people who call themselves Christians. And, and I see how they act. 
I, I see how they, they treat other people. And if being a Christian is like that, he says, I don't want to be it. They have false advertisements. But only, he says that, he says, listen, he said, no, no, another point about that is, he said, this, this tree here, is this tree was not living up to its full potential. It had an opportunity to, 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 to meet a need. It had an opportunity to satisfy Christ, but it didn't do it. How many people who sit in church and, 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 and not participate in church, how many people who have great potentials to do great things for the, for the body of Christ, but, but sit down on their potential? He says, guess what? They have great potentials. How many people walk around and can do some great things for the, for the body of Christ, but instead they sit out on it. He said this, this tree had great potentials. It had the potentials of being the blessings. It had a potential of, of, of benefiting not just me, but just other people. How many churches have great potentials, but not fulfilling their potentials? Don't you know that there are a lot of people out there that are hurting there are people who are broken. And when they come in the church, they look at for, for, for perp, uh, churches that, that can fulfill a need. Not, not everybody don't want money. Everybody ain't looking for food. There's some folk who's heartbroken. There's some folk whose mind need regulating. There's some folk who need a word from God. There are some folk who come in here, they need to know you ain't the only somebody going what you're going through. That, that they need to hear, I've been there, man. I've been there, sister. You ain't the only somebody that had a baby out of wedlock. I've been there. You ain't the only somebody that dropped out of school. You ain't the only somebody that been in jail and come out of there. The same God that delivered me can deliver you too. Uh, there's the folk who are broken, got great potential to be in the house of God, to do great work, but we sit down on it. Our kids, we, we wonder why, why our kids are so bad, why, 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 our, why our churches are so non-productive, why, why our kids are going astray, well, why are the people of God are not using their potentials to the full for useness? He said, look here, this tree here, it has false advertisement because it's not living up to its full potential. And then he says, it has a useless, useless, useless life. So this, this, this tree here is, is, is a tree that's sitting in the garden. It's taking up all the, uh, the nutrients. It's taking up all the carbon dioxide. It's taking up everything that uh, other trees could use this, this energy. Other trees could use this benefit here. But this tree is sitting here and, and, and it's useless. Uh, ain't nothing worse than a useless saint. Nothing worse than a useless saint. A, a, useless, a, useless, a useless saint is like a useless spouse. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to laugh on that one, is it? <laughs> They, if your spouse here, don't you laugh. <laughs> he says, look here, is there useless? Nothing worse if you hang around a useless person, guess who else is going to be useless? You, you, you're going to become just like them. He says, look here, the kingdom of God has no use for useless people. Well, what you doing sitting in church every Sunday? Soaking up the air. So sitting down, wasting a seat for somebody. Uh, mess. This is uh, 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 wearing away the, the parking lot with your car. And, and you come in and you're being useless. He said, look here. It was a useless person here. And God says, I, I have no, 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 no tolerance for uselessness. I have no tolerance for people with false advertisement. He says here in Matthew 7 uh, and, and 23, uh, 7 rather, 22 and 23, he said, look here, there have to be some folk that's going to get to heaven. They're going to say, God, I, I, I did not do this, do that. He said, yeah, but I know you're not. 
That's why you didn't use your self to your full potential. You were useless. Ask the church at Laodicea. The church at Laodicea, he said, look at here. You, you look warm, Laodicea. You don't know which way you want to go. He said, listen here. You don't use yourself to your full potential. You're not, you're not being useful uh, when you need to be useful. He said, look at here. I wish you'd make up your mind because you're making my stomach sick. I'm about to throw up because you're a false advertisement. He said, look here to the, to the church at Laodicea. Uh, to a church even now. So look here, we, are we being false advertisements? That's why uh, when you go down to Mark, that's why he went that back to the church and, and tore up the church, uh, tore down um, uh, the, the chain tables and, and kicked folk out because they were, they were being useful. They were doing things the wrong way. They, were, they weren't using their potentials for the right potentials. They weren't feeding people. They weren't, he said, let's hear my house be a house of prayer. We as church uh, members in the body of Christ are be building uh, prayer warriors. Because if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face. You want America to change? Get somebody to pray. You want your house to change? Stop praying. Let the body of Christ stop praying. You will start seeing our governor do right. You will start seeing our senators do right. You will start seeing our president do right. You will start seeing our world do right. He said, look at here. Stop, stop going around with false advertisement. But I want you to go around with the true uh, armor of God. I want you to go around with the true name of Jesus on your chest. Not only does it, it's written on there, but it's in your lifestyle. You ain't got to have a long ass machine quoting the whole Bible. All you got to do is just live because it's in you. What kind of advertisement are you doing? What kind of tree are you producing? Are you a useless Christian? Christian? Are you useless to the body of Christ? Are you living to your full potential? Brothers and sisters, the question is, what kind of advertisement are you living? God bless you. God keep you on this holy week. Uh, make sure that you're advertising Christ, not only in your talk, but in your walk. In every day of your life, Christ ought to be pleased with you. He ought to be saying, job well done. God bless you. It's my prayer. Those things about the goodness of God. I'm glad y'all stood up. I was about to ask you if you can do that. I'm a little technically challenged up here with this over ear monitor. My daughter's going to help me one day. <laughs> Brother, thank you for telling me what Jesus was doing on Monday. Now I know. He was looking for some food.
worthy. What a wonderful way to end up a Monday. How awesome is that? Great sermon, great worship. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, girl. Um, and I want to remind everyone that we're going to be right back here tomorrow night at 6.30. Uh, uh, Drew Kenyon, the youth director, he's going to be preaching. And then uh, Co Corey Swinford, he will be uh, leading us in worship. Uh, so if you would, um, try to make it if you can tomorrow night at 6.30. If you can, let's um, say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I do want to remind everyone that we do have administrative...